If you're expecting to choose your seat and access Wi-Fi without whipping out the credit card, think again. This is the unvarnished truth about flying British Airways business class. From cabin to seats, food, linen, service amenities, and more. Over the past two years, Oliver and I have taken three round trip flights, San Diego to Heathrow on British Airways. In this video, I am sharing my super nitpicky discerning take on where they exceed and where British Airways falls short. By the end of this video, you'll have all the information needed in order to make a good informed buying decision. Hi ladies, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Shelly Pelly. I am a style, beauty, and travel connoisseur who for the past 20 years has traveled exclusively business and first class. In short, I'm really discerning and I know what I'm talking about. Let's do this. Okay, ladies, one thing that you're gonna need to know in order to set expectations. Business class is different from first class on an international flight. Think of it this way. Coach is like staying at the Ramada Inn. Business class is like staying at the Hyatt. First class is like staying at the Four Seasons. We specifically are talking about business class in this video. I have five pros for British Airways. The first one is maybe a little personal. We live in San Diego and British Airways has a direct flight into Heathrow. The downside is that they don't offer a first class cabin for this particular plane, so we take the business class. Number two, the flight crew are always lovely, helpful, friendly. We've never had any issue with the flight crew. Number three are British Airways club seats. These are the business class seats that have a sliding privacy door, which I I actually really love. And although people can still look over and see into your pod if they're up and walking by, sliding the door actually muffles out a lot of the noise of the airplane and makes your pod cozy, comfortable, and really a lot more private. Number four is the seat configuration. The cabin has a one-to-one -one configuration with seating pods that can easily accommodate both solo and non-solo passengers regardless of where you sit. In the middle, you can sit next to your partner and slide the partition if you wish to talk to them or slide it back for more privacy. Um, on flights, I always get like super chatty and excited. Oliver, who's a little more introverted, will usually listen for about 30 seconds and then he slides the partition shut. Number five is their in-flight entertainment. They do have a very nice selection of movies, TVs, entertainment, and the like. And surprisingly, there wasn't an additional charge to use it. Okay, those are the pros. I have eight cons. And remember ladies, with anything that I do, I'm always very, very nitpicky on your behalf. I want you to have all the information so that you can either decide that's not a big deal to me or oh, thanks for telling me because that would be a deal killer. Number one, nickel and diming. Who likes to be nickel and dimed, especially when you're plopping down thousands of dollars for a business class seat? During the booking process, if you want the privilege of being able to choose your seat, British Airways charges an additional $130 per person per flight. For a couple, that's an additional $530. This isn't a budget airline. This isn't a coach seat for which you would expect to pay in order to choose your seat. We're talking international business class. British Airways is one of the only airlines that does this. I mean, let us pick a seat. Listen, I'll share with you that our tickets together are anywhere from like eleven dollars to $12,000 for us. Let us pick our seat, am I right? Number two, want Wi-Fi? Get your credit card ready. British Airways charges anywhere from, I think, it was like five to 15 pounds in order to access their Wi-Fi in flight. I mean, really? Number three, substandard cleaning in between flights. We've taken three round trip trips to London over the past two years. That's a total of six separate flights. Without exception, there has always been some sort of remnant of the previous passenger in my seat. Discarded wrapper, to a half used water bottle, half used amenity kit, to the zippered slip that usually houses all of your linens being crumpled up and stuffed underneath the seat. That the people cleaning the cabin in between flights just aren't doing that great of a job. Bare minimum, seats. Although the length and the width was perfectly fine and probably pretty standard among most other airlines, the padding on the seats was very thin, y'all. And listen, I'm 102 pounds. I'm not very big. I could feel the structural bones of the seat underneath me as I was laying down. The fabric is also cheap and super scratchy. The seats are lay flat, which is pretty standard nowadays, but they're not super comfortable. If you're tall or a bigger guy like my husband Oliver, who's almost 6'3", 220 pounds, 
pounds. His feet hung over the edge and it was challenging for him to actually move around and get comfortable enough to sleep. That's just a heads up. Number five, cheap bedding. They offer what they call a mattress cover, which is really a joke. It's really more the equivalent of a towel to lay down over your seat. They should really rethink this in terms of setting expectations with the customers. They should just call it a seat cover. That's what it is. The duvet also should not be called a duvet. It's nothing more than a piece of fabric that's maybe a third of an inch thick. The fabric is cheap and scratchy. They have an anemic amenity bag, at least one of the worst ones that I've experienced traveling international. I'm showing you the contents of the bag here. It's really just the basics. Number seven, a packaged nut snack. I needed to be sure to pronounce that correctly. As most of you know, one of the first things that they're gonna serve you in flight is a drink of your choice and usually a round ramekin of warmed nuts. Not on British Airways, plopped in front of me while we were flying was just a package of not even all nuts. It was nuts and a lot of different filler like crackers and that sort of thing. That is a cheap cost cutting measure and it's not appreciated. I think that that's just super lame. Number eight, Golden Corral quality food. Not to dish on Golden Corral and in fairness, I've never been there, but you kind of expect a bit more of an elevated food experience when you're traveling business or first class and not so much here. I found it to be inexpensive, slopped together. The fish was way overdone and oh, by the way, it kind of smelled. The mashed potatoes seemed to me to be instant mashed potatoes, although I wasn't back there watching them. And overall, it just felt to be an inexpensive, here's your slop kind of presentation. They also don't put a white linen tablecloth down over your tray, which is what you would normally expect. Side note, y'all, I am being super nitpicky, but if you usually travel coach and you're looking to see whether or not you should travel business class, yes, you should absolutely do so. I will go out on a limb and say business class, no matter what airline, is always going to be better than coach for the very fact that you've got much more comfortable seats and you can lay flat. But if you're a seasoned traveler and you kind of have certain expectations, this is why I wanted to lay it out for you. In short, the flight crew are friendly, the seat pods have a very nice level of privacy, a nice selection of movies, TV shows, and entertainment. For seat comfort, luxury bedding, amenities, food quality, the overall feel of the cabin, it's bare minimum. I call it just enough to be able to call it business class, not a stitch more. And if you're going to London, regardless of what airline you choose, you're gonna to wanna to know where to stay. So be sure to check out my next video, The Four Seasons versus The Savoy, where I tell you all about the difference so you can make the best buying decision. And until a couple days from now, safe travels. Talk to you soon. You know what they say, don't bring